Thanks for joining us for another DK Custom Products video. My name is Kevin, this is Dwayne, and today we're going to talk about riding aggressively in the curves on a Harley Davidson trike. Now, before we get into this subject, we want to say it's highly recommended take a, a riding course for trikes. We're not instructors, we're not lawyers, we're not telling you how to ride. We're just giving you tips on riding aggressively, how to navigate curves a little more aggressively, whether it be purposely or on accident. Sometimes you come in a little too hot and you need to know what to do to prevent rollovers. Yeah, and so this is just, we're just gonna share a few of our experiences, mm -hmm. what we've learned riding. You need to do your own research. You need to ride your own ride. You need to be comfortable. Don't do anything that's vaguely uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And here's the big thing. The big thing is, Practice in a parking lot. Practice, practice, practice in a parking lot so that you know where the limits are of your riding capability mm -hmm. and or of the trike in a parking lot where there's not traffic. Right, and here's where here's where a lot of people come up short is, like myself, I've been riding for about 20 years, but I promise you, when you throw that leg over that trike, it's a whole different thing. Those, those fundamentals you've learned and come to, uh, you've become accustomed to on a two wheel bike. A lot of those just go away, and it trikes. I mean, let's call it what it is. It's for the older crowd. A lot of the, you guys that are in, that are interested in a trike have been riding for forty plus years sometimes. But a lot of times that can actually hinder you in how you ride your trike. So Kevin's going to give you guys some tips on uh, how not to have an accident on your trike uh, when you get a little too hot in those curves. Now, don't be discouraged if you get on a trike and you go, this is so foreign, you don't know what to mm -hmm. do. And a lot of people pick up on a trike just like that. And those mostly those are people who spent a lot of time on quads, on four wheels. Yeah. It's very similar how you ride the trike with how you would ride a quad or an ATV. Some people pick up quickly. Some people don't. Don't worry. Even the people who don't pick up on it quickly within a few weeks of riding especially if they do some practicing in an empty parking lot they're going to start feeling very very comfortable on it that's right the other day we recorded a video where we went frame by frame on an accident that happened yeah. on a tri-glide i'll put a link to that video up in the corner here and we sort of got a little bit off and talked a lot about how you can ride aggressively in a curve safely on a trike by employing trail braking by either apexing the curve or taking the inside corner on the curve so we're going to go over all of that stuff right now we hope you enjoy the video so you can see the brake lights just came on as he's approaching the curve he's still going straight he's not that's perfect yeah putting the brakes on as you approach the curve to scrub off your speed to be at a speed that you want to go through the curve at and here's the key Trail braking is very, very valuable on a trike because when you put on your rear brakes, not your front brakes, there's not a two-wheeler, it's a trike. When you put on your rear brakes, it squats that rear end down a little bit. And so it helps plant those mm -hmm. tires. That's one reason to trail brake. The other reason to trail brake, the other variation of trail braking with a trike and the way that I go through any curves aggressively is I have my foot on the rear brake, I have some throttle on. Because what you don't want to do is upset the geometry of right. the bike by letting up on the throttle or by giving it throttle, by letting, letting the brakes off or by putting the brakes on. Better to go into the curve with a steady throttle and with brakes. When you give it throttle, you're also squatting the rear end down and you're pu pushing those rear tires into the ground. So by having throttle on, you're pushing the rear tires in the ground. By having your brakes on, you have, you're pushing your rear tires in the ground, yep. giving you a better chance of keeping that trike stable in a curve right. that you're riding through aggressively. Not, right, not just stable, but also smooth. The same can't be said if you were trying to do it with front brakes. It would be a very erratic stopping motion and, you know, a lack of yeah. control. So what you want to do, and then you control the speed through the curve, not by changing the throttle. You control the speed through the curve by, by going a little more brake or a little bit less brake. Yeah. 
That way it keeps the trike very stable and it keeps downward force on those rear tires. So you, you see he started out perfectly. Rear brakes are on, rear brakes are on. He's in the curve, rear brakes are on, rear brakes are on. Rear brakes are still on. And we're going to come back to this little section right here in a minute. But let's just look at when the rear brakes come off. Rear brakes are still on. Rear brakes are still on. Rear brakes are off. You saw the rear brakes go off? Now look what happens. The tire begins to lift. Tire's lifting. And see, we're going frame by frame, but this is uh, 30 frames per second. So we're at like one fifth of a second. So about one fifth of a second after he lets up on his rear brakes, yeah. the rear right tire lifts off the ground in less than half of a second. So this is something that I absolutely would never do. And that is let up on the rear brakes when I'm in a curve. To me, that's the number one cause of what happened is mm -hmm. letting up on the uh, rear brakes. Now, if he would have kept the rear brakes on by giving it more throttle or chopped the throttle, it might have done the same thing. What you want is you want to keep that rear end planted down solid by having power going to the rear wheels through your throttle and having braking of your rear wheels through your rear brakes, that keeps it stable and planted. And half a second after he left up on the brakes, you see what happened. get in this situation, mm -hmm. there are two things that you can do to get that rear tire back on the ground. It's too, putting the brakes on is not going to do you any benefit now. Okay? Yeah, the damage is done. <laughs> so one thing is you can lean way to the right. You can put a lot of your body weight over to the right and get that rear tire down. The other thing you can do is you can steer to the left and that will bring the rear tire down, which is what he did. And he steered to the left and it brought the rear tire down. But it, and we can see that right here. There, you can see that turning to the left. You can see his front tire is turned to the left and the rear tire is coming down. But now he's headed toward the edge of the road. Right. Okay. And now all of this is happening in milliseconds. Yeah. Okay. And let me tell you, uh, those of you who have not been in an accident, it's so easy, so easy to go, well, if he would have yeah. done this or would have done that. When you are in a situation like this, there's no thinking going <laughs> on. It's all pure reaction. Yeah. That's why it's so important to, to practice in an empty parking lot so that you build muscle memory because you're not going to have time in a quarter of a second or a tenth of a second to think through what you should be doing and then to execute that. By the time you think it through and go to execute it, everything's over. Right. It's all done. Uh, yeah. Whatever is going to happen has happened. So he instinctively, because he is an experienced writer, instinctively knew to turn left. Yeah. Um, he didn't instinctively shift his weight to the right. He may not have ever practiced that or, again, in a situation like this, things are happening so quick. Yeah. You, you know. So there's a right way to navigate a curve and there's a, you know, a less than right way. The most popular and holds true for trikes and for two wheel bikes is to do an apex like we see right here. And that's where you take the sharpness out of the curve. Right. Now, the other thing that you can do on a trike because you want to keep that inside tire on the ground is when you're going through a curve, you take the inside of the curve all the way through the curve because usually the inside of the curve, the tire is lower. And you can see that that is what he did right here. He started out at the inside, 
but then he went to the outside. He didn't stay on the inside. And so by staying on the inside, you are keeping that inside tire down yeah. low, much less likely for it to lift up off the ground. So we hope this video and hope the information Kevin shared with you guys uh, is gonna help you guys be a little more comfortable on those tracks. Because one thing I've learned, if you ride with, if you know a lot of people that ride, on two wheel bikes, people have different riding styles. I know people that do use nothing but front brakes. I know people that use the majority of rear brakes. On the trike, <laughs> there's not so much leeway on that. Like there's a certain way you have to stop a trike and there's other ways where if you just grab a handful of front brakes, it's going off the road. Or if you hit too much rear brakes, it's gonna straighten you out. Like we keep saying in the video, it's a whole different beast operating a trike as opposed to a two wheel bike. Not that it's more dangerous, but it's just different. So we hope this video helped you guys out. If you have any questions at all about anything you've seen in this video, leave us a comment below or shoot me an email to support at dkcustomproducts.com.